welcome to your new moon tarot readings for September 2016. Thank you for stopping by. New moons are the best time to plant the seeds to co-create your life. And you are going to tend to these seeds, nurture them, water them, help them grow. And they will culminate into full moons six months from now. Roughly six months from now. So my readings are about planting the seeds for this new moon activation point. Keep in mind that these are general readings and may not resonate with you. For personal readings, please check out the description box below for more information. I am offering Name Your Price Star Tarot readings until the end of 2016. Also listed below are timestamps if you would like to skip insights on the new moon transits. I have prayed to God, to angels, to my ancestors, to spirit guides, to deliver clear, loving messages for the highest good of all. So let's get into it. Because this is very Virgo-centric, um, it's worth mentioning that Mercury is in retrograde and Mercury is in Virgo, and Virgo is very mercurial. Uh, Mercury is about information, communication. Um, when Mercury is in retrograde, we can experience um, delays in email or um, technology breakdowns um, or misunderstandings, um, jumbled up information. What I got from these readings was being overly involved in details. So there's this information overload that a lot of the signs are experiencing. And most of the messages I've been getting are just to simplify this information. So we are going to have to make a lot of edits um, this new moon cycle um, to weed out the information that is unnecessary and distracting us from the big picture. But these are the times you have to embrace Mercury in retrograde. Everyone hates Mercury in retrograde because, you know, things are frustrating, uh, uh, calls don't go through, um, computers break down, and, you know, it's frustrating because we want to just get things done. But I think there's a purpose. I think to embrace Mercury in retrograde, is to look at these breakdowns and look at them as happy accidents. So maybe um, you're communicating with someone uh, via email and things get heated or something and you, um, you know, write this long uh, reply Oh, what would be even better is comments, because a lot of people fight in, like, social media comments. So let's use this as an example. You're having a fight on Facebook about some sort of political thing. And for whatever reason, this big, long comment that you had um, that, you know, brought light to the political system and how this country is run, and you spent, you know, 30 minutes writing, typing this dissertation on your opinion, only to have your server shut down and you weren't able to deliver that message. Um, so this can be really frustrating. This is the effects of Mercury in retrograde. But I think during these times, it helps us, like that message wasn't meant to go through, so it helps us stop, slow down, and think of better ways to get our message across, to um, figure out uh, better ways to use technology. So it's just a time to embrace Mercury in retrograde is to embrace the delays as times to perfect systems. And because this is in Virgo, and because Virgo is ruled by Mercury, I think what we can learn from Virgo in this Mercury in retrograde, in this Sun in Virgo, in this Moon in Virgo, is to step back from our like hypercriticism, which is also Virgo, but step back 
from the situation and reevaluate how we go about things. So don't get frustrated with Mercury in retrograde. I mean, it is frustrating, but one way to um, curb that frustration is to embrace it for the opportunity to make it better. Um, in my readings, it seems like air signs are going to handle the Mercury in retrograde better than others this month. Um, they're very cerebral signs. Um, they think a lot about abstract thought, and they're very, like, communicative. So that is my Mercury in retrograde. Another planetary influence that has been activated during this new moon is the Pisces-Saturn square. And mutable signs are going to struggle with these energies. I'm sorry, um, Mercury in retrograde, the air signs are Libra, Gemini, and Aquarius. And those are the signs that are going to handle Mercury in retrograde the best. But for the Pisces Saturn square, mutable signs, which are Gemini, uh, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces, they're going to struggle with Pisces and Saturn square the most. And what this square is doing is it's challenging our fact versus fiction. Um, you have cold hard facts, hypercriticism, this is Saturn, overanalyzing, information overload, skepticism, um, and stubborn, um, like fixated on stubborn uh, data. And that's Saturn. Saturn is the hard lesson planet. And mixed with Mercury in retrograde and this information overload, um, you know, too detail-oriented type of energy, some of you might be feeling this very strongly. For others, it's the cold hard facts versus delusion, living in a fantasy, over-imagination, detached from reality. So that's going to be on the Pisces end. It's going to be more dreamy. It's going to be more um, uh, just, yeah, detached from reality, not living, uh, not seeing uh, what's really there, like believable lies. Um, so I think this Pisces-Saturn square is going, how we can use this, it's going to cause a lot of fights. It's going to cause a lot of fights, um, a lot of fights in the workplace. It's going to cause a lot of fights in f uh, families, in like multi generational uh, situations. Um, and I feel like it's going to be, you know, a lot over what we usually fight about with different generations, which is religion and politics. And since we're, if you live in the U.S., since we're in a, an election cycle, you know, things get more heated and divisive. So um, this Pisces-Saturn square is going to challenge all of us to piece together what is real and um, see what areas we need to suspend our disbelief and kind of uh, be more idealistic about um, because sometimes when we um, are too fixated on data, we're not seeing the big picture, like the Mercury in retrograde situation. And I think this, how we can use it, how we can use it to our advantage is to um, articulate our manifestations. So this is going to help us weed out unnecessary expectations that Saturn has, um, but it's also going to get us more realistic with our dreams like um, Pisces experiences. So we're going to... Um, Articulate what we want in life based on this push and pull of facts and fantasy. Another planetary influence, the last one, is the um, uh, Sagitt there's Mars in Sagittarius and Saturn in Sagittarius. And all of the, during my tarot readings, all of the mammal animal cards, except for Leo the lion, um, got the devil. <coughs> Excuse me. Aries got, Aries is the ram, bull, Taurus is the bull, <laughs> Sagittarius is the horse, Capricorn is the goat. 
Aries, Taurus, Sagittarius, and Capricorn all got the devil. Don't be scared of the devil. It means a lot of different things. But in this, um, you know, planetary dance for this month, and it meant different things in, the re in different readings too, but the energy of the month, if you're dealing with this um, uh, Mars and Sagittarius, Saturn and Sagittarius, is... Think about the devil, like the actual devil, Lucifer. He's a fallen angel who's stuck on earth. So I think the energy we're dealing with is in regards to our animal urges, to, you know, sex and lust, or um, ego drama and a slashing out. So there might be some temptations. There might be some, like, temptations to, you know, uh, screw things we shouldn't, <laughs> or there might be some temptations to pick fights that um, will not bring about any resolutions. They're just fights to win. They're just fights to dominate. Um, so uh, I think those mammal signs, Aries, Taurus, Sagittarius, Capricorn, um, and also fire signs. Even though the Leo did not have devil, um, Leo is a uh, fire sign. And I feel like they are still involved in this story. So just be aware of your um, instincts and try to rise above. Try to, like, be like an angel. I mean, not like, <laughs> you don't have to, like, uh, be a saint or anything. Just, like, try to rise above uh, temptations that are going to um, keep you stuck on earth and not elevating to a higher place. So that is the planetary... Um, uh, insights that I got for um, my tarot readings for the planetary insights I got before my tarot readings it is included in the description box below also the decks I used and plenty of other information so now on to your tarot readings hello cancer um, the king of cups is you you are the master of your feelings your creativity your intuition you are the master of your heart and you're someone who's worked really hard to get to a place in your life um, you know cancers are very driven um, and they're very tough they have that outer shell they're very strong very tough Sweet, sweet, sweet people, but very tough and driven people. Um, and all of this stuff in your life, a house, a car, nice things, food and wine, just resources that you've worked very hard to get, very hard to cultivate. You've worked very hard to maintain them, very hard to... Um, keep them in your life, um, keep them long lasting, and you have an abundance of resources. You are coming out the ears in resources, um, and it's a good thing. It's not something that's been handed to you. It's something you've had to work for and something you've been very diligent in getting, and you've done a great job. The Nine of Pentacles is the Independent Woman card. So you might have been single for a long time. And you've reached a place of stability all by yourself. No one helped you, or maybe you had some help, but um, the main source of getting all these things came from you. So give yourself a pat on the back. If it's not a house or a car, it can also be a resource in general. So maybe you have, like, great um, contacts for your job, great networking, um, a great network, a great, um, base of clientele or maybe you have um, a resource could also be time so maybe you have um, a lot of time and it's taken you a lot of time to get the time <laughs> but in any case you have all these things um, and they're most likely material resources um, but they can also be emotional resources too they can be emotional stability 
Um, and right now, you're looking back at a time where you felt left out in the cold, where you didn't have that stability. And you moved away from it. You've moved on. Um, you're the single independent lady, but something has triggered something in you um, that's put a fear of you going back into poverty or going back into being without two pennies to rub together, having a sense of lack, being without. Um, and you are looking at a problem that's long gone and you're feeling a sense of lack and it's ridiculous, Cancer, because you are material, materially satisfied. Nine of Pentacles says that. You are, um, you know, stable in your material. Um, and so there's no need to worry. And yet you keep feeling like maybe you have the sense of, oh, I'm going to lose it all. Or maybe it's this feeling of, I've worked so hard for this. Um, can I keep it? Um whatever situation happened it's making you focus on this five of pinnacles but this five of pinnacles was a time so bad um, that you never want to go back you never want to go back to living paycheck and paycheck paycheck to paycheck so it's understandable you know you don't want to be poor <laughs> no one wants to be poor I understand um, but because you're focused on this sense of lack, because you're too busy and too focused on this five of pentacles, because you're looking at this past that doesn't even exist anymore, you are missing the energy of the magician. The magician is reversed. But when the magician is upright, the magician has all the tools they need. And you do. You have all the to tools you need. Um, your tools could even be the very resources that you worked so hard to cultivate over the last few years. Um, so you have all these tools, um, and the magician works with the magic um, within himself and with his tools. So he has the tools, he has the magic within himself, and he works with the magic of the universe. Of He works with fate, with coincidence, with being in the right place at the right time. And you're not seeing all the magical things that are already in your life because you are focused on the lack. So don't be in a poverty mentality. There are plenty of resources in this world for everyone to share. And the magician sees those resources and he uses them to his advantage. So um, one of the things you can ask yourself is what resources do you have right now? Maybe it's time to take a moment of um, hard, uh, like a hard look at gratitude and think about, um, you know, the nine of pinnacles. What all do you have in your life? And make a list of all the things you're grateful for um, and all the things you've worked for. Um, and like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, money or um, material things, but it's a resource. So, you know, it could be a beautiful home, um, lots of time, but it can also be a loving partner or good friends. And those are resources um, that you have right now. So just try to focus on what you have and not what you don't have. I also think with the Magician, the Magician is a good manifesting card, and with some of the other Cancers in my life, I um, have uh, felt like this would be a good time for them to make vision boards. Um, so either, um, you know, clip stuff from magazines, draw, um, because, you know, you're the King of Cups, you're um, the King of your creativity, so... Um, find a way to visualize what you want. Don't focus on what you're lacking or what you lacked in the past. Um, so focus on what you have and what you want. And by visualizing what you want, it will give you the sense of having the tools that you need. Also, when you look at what all you're grateful for, it will give you a sense of what tools you need. So... Um, this new moon will be a big manifestation um, moon for you, and I'm looking forward to you realizing your dreams and bringing them to life and staying in this 
abundance. So thank you so much, Cancer. I hope that was helpful, and I appreciate you. Thank you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and leave a comment below. Again, if you would like to schedule a personal reading, I am offering Name Your Price readings. So please follow the instructions in the description box below. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. See you next new moon.